It's all changing Cork hurling this week uh, with the announcement that Aidan Walsh, he's not going to be involved next year. Conor Lahan is in Christopher Joyce is in Chris O'Leary. And of course, Anthony Nash has announced his retirement as well. Is this something that we consider should consider a shock in Cork? Or is the idea of cleaning the house, I suppose, is a fairly crude way of putting it. But is this something that you'd almost expect given Cork's trajectory of late? Yeah, probably the, the trajectory this, of this year. But the, yeah, like this is Kieran Kingston's second term. I would have personally imagined that you know if he was going to move players on um, after being involved in the panel for many years, that maybe he would have done it initially straight away, and he would have had a, you know a fresh start from the beginning. Whereas now uh, they've currently got a poor season behind them, and you know he's making changes coming into the second season. Whether those changes will bear fruit straight away is you know yet yet it's not un- it's unknown at the moment. So you're going into a third season there potentially where you're trying to bed in, and potentially that could be you know it could be the end of his term by the second or third season. So I thought maybe it would have come a, come a bit quicker. Um, with, with due respect to to the guys that maybe have been, have been kind of cast aside by Kingston. Probably guys that were on and off the team, particularly particularly in recent years, um, form hit big high big highs, then probably took big enough dips as well. And I think consistency is probably the word that should come back to. It's not something we've associated with Cork. You know, Ben O'Connor said it to me like that they used to always kind of laugh or joke almost about you know you'd never back Galway because you don't you don't know what you're going to get from them on a given day. And he said we have now become that. And that, that's, that's a fair point. Yeah. And um, I think the consistency or maybe lack thereof from some of these players, you know, Lahan in 18, absolutely unbelievable. Um, last couple of years, very, very quiet. Aidan Walsh, eight points from play in an under-21 game against Limerick. Very, very quiet. And, you know, a lot of the days, even when he played senior. Chris Joyce, uh, been wing back maybe the last couple of years on and off. Some good days, but some bad days as well. So... Um, probably not that much of a surprise. I personally thought it would have come a bit sooner, though. That's with due respect to the guys, the guys that have obviously given you know given their careers to to, to Cork. It's kind of interesting. Like, Ian Walsh is thirty, so in a grand scheme, he has more time at that level. If they've kind of if they were backing him, uh, Connor Lahan, he's twenty eight. Seems really early. Christopher Joyce, off the top of my head, he's younger still. Chris O'Leary certainly, as he was playing with um, UCC there in the last year or so. Anthony Nash is 32, I think, but for a goalkeeper, that's pretty young. So to me, it just does really show that they feel like some of the players that we've had for a long, long time, we've given them an opportunity and we feel like moving in another direction. And just there, there are other changes to the panel and backroom team changes are in the pipeline, I believe. But, um, hey Shane, you've been very, you've been very generous to Anthony Nash. Uh, Anthony Nash is 37 next year. Is he? Um, he- yeah, even though you wouldn't think it, because he was—he's been along that. See, it, uh, this has happened to me a couple of times before. He obviously was understudied to Don Logue for so long. I think he was drafted in. I think he's. I think it was either all five or all seven. I'm not sure, but he didn't. He didn't play his first championship game. I think until 2012. Yeah. And then he's obviously he was nominated uh, for Hurler of the Year in 2013, and has been the mainstay ever since. But you know, his mid to late twenties before he mm. got his chance in goals. Um. So like it's. Like him, him stepping aside maybe probably isn't that much of a surprise, but yeah, he definitely you wouldn't think you would definitely wouldn't think he's the age that he actually is anyway. Yeah, and then just looking at some of the, the players that have been called up: Niall Cashman, Sean Toomey, Daryl O'Leary, Jer Melerick, um, and I think Tyke DC, Alan Connolly, Daniel Meany, and Shane Barrett. A lot of those are guys that we saw in the club championship in the latter part of the year. So to to your money, do you like what are Cork trying to do here? Do you think they're just realizing we have to look at this as a slightly longer term project and? Can you can you really do that, or is it a case that they just feel that the guys that we've talked about aren't quite cutting for them, cutting it for them at this level? And I'll refer back to their last game of the season in the championship. Anthony Nash played in goals. I don't think the puck outs particularly worked brilliantly for him that day. Uh, Christopher Joyce, I don't see him being. He wasn't used that day at all. Connor Lahan came in for the last ten minutes. Aidan Walsh came in for the last two minutes and um, Chris O'Leary wasn't used either. So it's not like, you know, they're playing against Tipperary. Two of these lads, a couple of these lads weren't used. A couple of the lads came in for a grand total of 11 minutes of normal time plus injury time, and then you had a goalkeeper as well. And a lot of people are probably looking at Patrick Collins and thinking he's the heir apparent anyway. So, yeah, you, you want to put it the right way and sort of res- be respectful of these players, because they're obviously good lads and, and have done a lot over the years. But 
it, it's pretty obvious. Uh, the manager is kind of voting with his decision here that he, he just doesn't see the future in them. Yeah, from you know recent games, he hasn't you know there hasn't been a lot of frontliners cut. There's been guys maybe, and with due respect to the lads again, that have only been bit part players maybe during during twenty twenty. Um, they obviously had you know a star studded uh, under twenty one team two years ago. Now they they won Munster by by thirteen points and were obviously beaten by three points in Tipperary in a, in a big turnaround uh, in the All Ireland final. But a lot of those guys would have been seen as the kind of the heir apparent to, co- to come in and take a lot of these uh, senior spots. And of course, we saw the likes of Alan Connolly and even Jerome Emmerich in the in the club season as well, and so the form that they brought to the table. So I think it's just placing faith in youth um, now rather than over the next couple of years, and maybe knowing that you know he has a couple of players who've maybe been inconsistent, and maybe they need to go with fresh blood and see what they can get off it. Um, I think uh, obviously the 1999 team, like there was a lot of new guys thrown in that year. By Jimmy mm-hmm. Barry, you know Ben Ben, o- ben O'Connor is the the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Sean Og obviously was was pretty young at the time as well. They went with a lot of young faces, and they had an All Ireland within their first year. So, like, I'm not saying that's going to happen with Cork, but they have loads of good young hurlers now. It's I, as I said to one of the boys last night, I was chatting to him about it. I said it's a it's it's a balance of mixing that speed and skill and power with uh, ignorance. Realistically, to be honest mm-hmm. with you, and if they can marry that balance they could put together, you know, a really nice squad. Mm. But uh, I just think he's placing faith in youth. A load of these guys have been involved with UCC's back-to-back Fitzgibbon Cup winning teams and with successful underage Cork teams. So I just think there is, has been a bit of success. They're, these guys are probably used to winning at, at most levels. So now is probably as good a time as ever. It's, it's Kingston's second year. He would probably not want to have regrets that he didn't you know, go with these guys a bit sooner. Uh, it's always the case when you, if you don't put them in soon, and or if you if you don't put them in soon enough, then someone else will benefit from your work. If you know what I mean, they're in. You, you're leaving it too late, and they have a year or two under the belt, and someone else will come in as manager and benefit from you throwing them in. So I think he's throwing them in now, and um, I see they have, they have a development squad as well that they've brought you know, ten young players in. So that's probably like I think Kerry did that a couple of years ago when Eamon Fitzmaurice was there with the senior footballers as well. You need to be careful it's a with that. One, no, you need to be careful with that development thing because uh, I think if those players are put in development squads and they're not allowed played with their clubs, they become like it's a hot house of playing against guys of your own similar sort of physical stature. And if their development, they're obviously not fully filled out adult players they're probably heading in that direction but the point i'm getting to is i would like to see them playing adult league games throughout the year and getting battered by grizzled veteran players and i think that's very important because if you keep squirreling away these guys and then all of a sudden you throw them out into inter-county having you know kept them away from even club action a club league action at that i think that can sort of work against you to some degree i'll let you back in there yeah just just on that i think if that's done correctly and those 10 guys that are put on the same conditioning programs or specific conditioning programs to get them up to the level and they're brought in for in-house games um, but they're playing club, basically training with their club the majority of the time apart from maybe these in-house mm-hmm. games, I think it'll, they'll benefit tenfold from it and if they show up really well in club championship action, maybe then they're drafted into the, to the actual panel and they have a chance. Uh, I suppose if you're bringing a guy into the panel isn't it a great luxury to say, well, he might have been training with us the whole time, but at least he's done he's done the same conditioning program. He's aware even tactically. Maybe they're brought in, you know, on a Saturday, maybe every couple of weeks, just to talk about the style of play that Cork are going to play, so that if they are called in at any stage, that they're in tune with that. I know that's something uh, Schmidt used to do with the Irish rugby team, even extended panel members. They basically had ho- homework that they had to do. So as long as it doesn't interfere with their club, uh, their club careers and developing at club level and being able to play loads and loads of you know adult league games, I think I think it is a positive move when they're. When they're segregated like that and you're kind, they're kind of robbed of representing their club and they fall between two stools and don't play enough competitive games, that's when you have a problem. Yeah, Aidan Walsh is an interesting one because you know he was a young footballer of the year in 2010 and he jumped over and back between the codes, as a few other people have done, and it, it generally hasn't worked out. It doesn't in the modern era. Podge Collins tried it and like probably would have had varying results with it. And some people would say that it's impeded... Aidan Walsh's development in either code, the idea of jumping between the two, to some degree maybe even Owen Cadigan, who I think has probably been more consistent in both codes over the years, 
and there's 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 other examples as well Lee Chin obviously jumped between the two as well do, do you think that it, like Aidan Walsh if he had to stay hurling the whole way throughout that that he could have become the main player on this the leader like I think 2014 he was in line for an all-star when Cork won the Munster title and then played against Tipperary in the All-Ireland semi-final Tipperary destroyed Cork and he was taken off uh, midway through the second half and that was his his sort of all-star gone we saw him in the last year or so at full forward at times we saw him at wing forward and this is a guy who you know if you jump all the way back to that 2011 under 21 game against Limerick eight points from play in that game in the under 21 championship like he just looked like he would be unbelievable but it hasn't really happened if I'm being honest with you Shane I always thought he was a better footballer than Hurler if I'm being honest with you I always thought he was more natural I always thought his um his physical stature and how mobile he was uh played into the hands better at inter-county football level than hurling like it's one thing being big for inter-county hurling but it's like i always find it with the bigger guys maybe they haven't played as much hurling it's all around your feet it's all around how quick you can get the ball into your hand when the ball is around your feet your touch around there we saw kind of um you know little, little bits of it little bits of it here and there i remember him doing well against kilkenny at full forward in league game in Nolan park a couple of years ago but if i'm being honest with you i think he probably could have been a mainstay uh, for the Cork footballers for the past decade if, if he had been there. He obviously got an All-Ireland medal very, very quickly in, in his football career. Now, Cork football probably um, probably tailed away at different stages, but like there's no reason why if he'd stayed with the footballers, he probably would be you know one of the first names in the team sheet and probably would have been uh, midfield this year um, in the Munster final against Tipperary as well. So that's just my own opinion. I, I, I always thought he, he had a bit more to offer at, uh, at football. Yeah, I think Christopher Joyce doing the crucial at one stage didn't help him, but like he's he's looked a very good player at times, as has Conor Lehan. You could argue of the players that have played across the last decade, his talent is up there in the top 10. I mean... You can argue the toss on that, but what I'm really saying is he's such a brilliantly talented player. He probably has, I think, three monster titles during that period as well. When he has burned bright, it has been brilliant. But at other times, then you're you're pulling your hair out. You're like, what what's happening here? How come this guy isn't getting in the game? Because like, he's not slow. He's not weak. He like he's obviously a brilliant hurler. It, but for whatever reason, it just hasn't happened, and it almost kind of typifies. Like his performance at the time almost typify Cork themselves, and that's not to single him out. I'm just saying a lot of lads kind of play like that. That it's it's flashes, you know. Yeah, um, and this is not to be disingenuous to him at all, but I think it's because of the amount of talent that he has and the flashes that you have seen. You're just you're looking at games when they're in the melting pot, and you're you're just kind of maybe wondering, you know, where is he or why hasn't he had that impact? You're kind of because and he did in 2014 uh, the All Ireland. Remember his great goal? You know, I mean, he scored yeah. that when it was needed. Yeah, like I would, I take that as a compliment. Like you're expecting it because you know how good he is, mm. and it's frustrating maybe then when he doesn't do it because we've seen flashes. I remember uh, could have been his first year with Cork. I think they played Kilkenny. They played Kilkenny down in Parky Cueve in a league game. And he caused JJ Laney all sorts of trouble. The, JJ wasn't able to live with him for the first 20 or 25 minutes. And then I, I remember actually, I was only thinking about this last night. I remember Fenley, Michael Fenley running through him after about 25 minutes. And Lehan's influence kind of waned thereafter. And as maybe he's been prone to that maybe too much in games. But like only as recently as in 2018. Like remember, remember Nash was finding him, finding him out in the sideline for puckouts, and he was putting Aubrey Poe for an outrageous score against Clare down the down the touchline, the new stand uh, in Turles, mm. unbelievable score. And I think the frustrating part is that you know what he's capable of, but we just didn't see it enough. And Kieran Kingston has obviously decided that you know maybe he's had that frustration as well, and and maybe it's time to give somebody else a chance. Yeah, absolutely. So interesting times with Cork. Let us know what your opinion is, and we'll probably do a full Cork uh, season review like we will with all the counties just once the All-Ireland has finished.